In this tutorial, we're going to look at making this photo stroke image animation sequence. Okay, as the introduction suggests and the title, uh, this tutorial has a bit of a crisis of identity. Is it a lyric thing or is it a photo slideshow? End of the day, it doesn't actually matter. The process is the same. The only thing that would differ is how you time the animations. So what I'll do is I'll just crack on, show you how to make the sort of picture things, how to basically animate them, and then I'll leave it to yourselves to find out the best way to time the animations. The tutorial was originally driven from a question on the Resolve AMV server. There are way better AMV editors than me. Page being the one that springs to mind. I'll link his channel in the description. We're going to be working in Fusion. So you want your Fusion Comp. You can come to your Effects Library. Turn it on. Come to Effects. And it's here at the top. Or if you're like me and you have it favorited, it's down in your favorites bar down the bottom. OK, into Fusion. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a background node. I'm going to drop it to transparent and I'm going to connect it to my media out. All that's done is it's constrained the resolution of your Fusion Comp to whatever resolution your timeline is. That way anything we put onto this background will need to be scaled, fit your Fusion Comp and you know that it will look right on the timeline. The reason I've done that is often if you bring your images in they're not always 1920 by 1080 or whatever resolution your screen is. And this way you scale them, you make them fit and they look right. So the background first, you can use whatever background you want. Uh, just to demonstrate the point I was just making, I'll use this doodles background, which as you can see is a square. So all I do, take the output of my doodle, pop it onto the output of the background node, this automatically creates a merge node. And now we can see our square isn't big enough. So you can use your merge node to just resize it and fill your screen. Like so. OK, the cards themselves. Cards themselves I make as a unit. And then all you need to do is copy and paste that unit and change the image that you're putting into it. So to make the card, bring in a background node and pop it into the viewer, bring in a rectangle node and pipe it into the blue input of the background. You can now change this to whatever size you want your card to be. Select your background and change it to whatever color you want your card to be. Now next we need to make the hole in the card. To do that with your first rectangle selected, Come to your hotbar and click the rectangle button again. This will put a second rectangle in. Select your second rectangle, come to your inspector and change the paint mode to subtract. This will now cut a hole out of your first rectangle. Again, adjust the size to whatever you want it to be and position it. And that's basically our card. So next we want to bring in one of our images. And what I'm going to do with this image, again, because it's not the same resolution as my timeline, I'm going to bring in a background node. I'm going to make it transparent. And I'm going to merge the output of my image onto this background node. This now puts the image scaled correctly for your timeline. We can use this merge node now to move our image around or to scale it to make it fit into our card. Our card is going to go on top. So again, take the output. Remember, this is our card. Take the output from our card background and merge it onto the output of the merge node from your image. And when you view everything in the viewer, you can see you've got your card, you've got your image, but they're slightly wrong. What you can do, come to this 
merge node where we merged our image onto our transparent background and use this merge to resize and reposition your image. So we can make it bigger and we can position it so that it sits within our card border. Now, obviously we don't want the bits flying out of the edge. So all we need to do, select your second rectangle, hit control and copy, and then click away, hit control and paste, and then take the output of this rectangle into the mask input of the merge, and it will crop it to fit the window. The final thing I did with the card is I came to the background node of the card itself, select it, hit shift space bar and type shadow, spell properly. And what you're looking for is drop shadow, select that, hit add. What this does is it puts a small shadow around the edge of your picture, but what it also does is it puts a shadow around the edge of the box, which will become noticeable in a couple of minutes. Select your shadow and just adjust the shadow to your taste. Something around there, I think it's all right. Now what I've done, or what I was doing while I was making the card is I wasn't moving anything around other than the image. Everything's relative to the center of the screen. It just makes life easier, I feel, to keep things sort of tidy. Now we're going to need to animate this card, but rather than animating it with any of the controls that we've got here, I'm going to select the last merge node here and I'm going to hit transform. This puts a transform node in and I'm going to use this transform node to do all the animations, all the movement and all the positioning and sizing. So I can drop the size in the transform. If you view the transform, you'll see. You can drop your size in the transform to whatever you want. How big or small you have your card is going to depend on how many cards you want on the screen. We can now use the transform to position our card and we can use the transform to put it at a jaunty angle. Now, if we take the output of our transform and merge it onto the last merge in our uh, base flow here, and view the output, our card is now over our base image where we applied the drop shadow earlier, also applied the drop shadow to the edge of the card. And that's pretty much it. From here on in, it's just about copying and pasting this block. So all we'd do, select the block, control C, click away, control V to paste another copy. If we now take the output of this transform and pipe it in, we can delete the image and we can bring in another image pipe it in and again using this merge node we can reposition and resize our image into the picture and then using the transform node we can move our picture over we can change the rotation on it and so you would go along now the only thing to note or not the only thing to note but one thing to note is as we come from left to right along this bottom pipeline whatever is at the left is on the bottom so our background image is on the bottom our first card is on our background image our second card will be over our first card if you want the next card, for example, to be underneath this card, all you'd do is you would move it along. And then when you paste your next copy of your card and merge it and change the image, I 
And now if we look at this image, use the merge node, we can resize it and reposition it. And then finally use the cards transform node. We can move it along. And as you see, this now sits behind our second card. Basically what's happening with the merge node, whatever goes into the yellow input of the merge node is on the background or on the bottom. Whatever goes into the green input is on top or in the foreground. So you can see that each of these goes into the background of the previous merge. And so it's just about setting your cards up in the order. I mean, if you want them all to be sort of one on top of another going along, just do that. Otherwise you need to sort of move the blocks around to get the right ones above and below each other. I think in the demo I had four, so we'll stick in the last card. Pipe it in, change the image. Which one haven't I used? I haven't used him, have I? Use your merge node here to scale and position your image. And then use the transform, place it where you want it. And do any rotation you want, like so. And so you've got your cards on your, your surface, on your table, on whatever. So you've got your four cards in place. The other thing I added was text. And to do that, all you would do, bring in a text node. And you're merging the output of this text node onto the last merge in your card block. So between the last merge and the transform. That automatically creates this merge node for you and connects everything up. And then you can put whatever text you want in here and format it how you want. Now, if you, not the transform node, but the merge before it, if you drag that into the viewer, you've got your card back in the center of the screen so you can see roughly where everything is or not roughly you can see where everything is so change your text color and then you can reposition and resize your text what may be easier is to add that text in before you do the copying and that way you've got a text node in place already but as I didn't do that, we will quickly copy and paste our text. To animate, select your transform node. Come to where you want this first card to be in position. So I'm going to go to frame 15, which is about half a second. I'm going to keyframe center, size and angle. Come back to frame zero. I'm going to up the size so it looks as though it's dropping down onto the screen a bit. I'm going to make it spin once. So I'm going to add 360. To whatever angle I already had there. And I'm going to pull it off the screen like so. So now as it comes in, it spins and it drops into place. And you do exactly the same for all the others. Go to the frame that you want it to be in this position. Keyframe that frame, go back to where you want the animation for that card to start and adjust it as necessary.
The final thing of note at the minute, none of these animations are eased. Select your transform, come to the top of the screen where it says spline. You can select the displacement, the size and the angle. You can do these separately or all together. Come to this zoom to fit button and this shows all your keyframes for a very basic easing. Select all your keyframes and hit S for sugar on your keyboard. What I also did was if you hit T on your keyboard, you get ease in, ease out. Ease in is where it's going to finish. So I just pulled this up quite drastically. So what you get is the card start slowly, whip in and then almost float if you like down into position. That's not a particularly good example because it's caching. You get the easing. So that, that that's very basic easing. As I say, if you want anything more fancy than that, you'll have to look elsewhere for instruction, I'm afraid, because it's it's not my thing at all. So you'd go along, you'd animate each card, and away you'd go. The final thing, if you want to add motion blur, another reason for using the transform nodes for the animation. Apparently, and I didn't know this, if you come to your last merge node and then hit transform, it adds in another transform node. You don't need to do anything with this transform other than select it, go to settings and hit motion blur. What that will do is it turns on motion blur for all the other transforms in your comp. But apparently it's only calculating this node. So it's a quicker way of doing motion blur. I can't remember which genius I picked that up off but it's off some YouTube tutorial somewhere. Once you've gone through all that, you'll have your animations like so. As I say, whether you do it as a lyric thing or whether you do it as a photo slideshow, same process. Hope all that makes sense. As I've said before, if there's anything that you want me to look at, drop a comment and I'll see what I can do. Please feel free to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.